Jane Eyre, but you'd just be lying to yourself. Don't lie to yourself. You know the truth. <laughs> I feel like a good cover instantly somehow makes a book more legit to me. <laughs> Hi and hello, it's Kristen from Kristen and Her Books. Welcome back to my channel. I'm glad you're here. And today I'm excited to be bringing you a new series on my channel that will probably co go live every Wednesday called Cover Changes Through the Ages. And yes, it is exactly how it sounds basically. Every Wednesday, I'm going to be talking about a different book cover and how it has changed over time. I will be doing books that range from very old Jane Eyre, Pride and Prejudice, etc. to books that are more new and forthcoming and how publishers have played around with their cover changes and why. And one of the reasons why I'm doing this is because in booktube, it's basically a fact that we do judge our books by our covers. Now, you can say that we don't, but you'd just be lying to yourself. Don't lie to yourself. You know the truth. <laughs> we love book covers in the book community. And though I think that some good books might hide behind ugly covers, I feel like a good cover instantly somehow makes a book more legit. To me. <laughs> so with all of that being said, that is why I'm going to be bringing this new series to my channel. Now, the book that we are going to be looking at today I thought was the best to start with because it is one of my most favoriteest books of all time. You know it, I know it, Jane Eyre. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you 15 cover changes from Jane Eyre ranging from the very first one in 1847 when it was published all the way to a 2020 edition that will come out in the summer. So I'm also going to include timestamps below. So if you want to see a specific year, you can go ahead and go straight to that time. Without further ado, let's look at some gorgeous book covers. In 1847, Jane Eyre was officially breathed into the world. And when it was breathed into the world, it had a phenomenal cover. I'm imagining that not many people were able to get their hands on this gorgeous cover, but um, here it is. Yes, so, so this is the first edition of Jane Eyre from 1847. There were some used booksellers who were saying it was a second edition, so I don't know, I couldn't really get any verifiable word on it, but either way, in the same year it came out, there was this edition. It has this like gorgeous blue and yellow marbled plating thing going on. And then if you look at the pages, they're basically like sprayed in the same marble print. It's gorgeous. It kind of has this whole like peacock feather theme going on. I tried to look at the price that these were being sold for. And I think it was like some astronomical number and they were all sold out. So if you want this, um, good luck trying to find it, but let's just take a moment and sigh. <sighs> then moving on, it's a little bit of a jump in years. We go from 1847 with the first edition to 1897 was the next one that I could find another hardcover edition kind of what you would like expect with an older book this like red um front and then this little ornate pattern here pretty but not as good as the first one and then we move on to an illustrated jane Eyre edition that came out that very same year let's take a look and the front is not very uh appealing i suppose <laughs> but it is one of the first editions to have like these great illustrations by this guy named Edmund Garrett. So here's a picture of some of the illustrations that were in this 1897 edition. Very traditional, moody type of Jane Eyre vibes going on. And then we move on over into the 1900s. And this is an early 1900s edition of Jane Eyre. I guess when your hair is that big, your hat also has to be um, its own entity. <laughs> It takes up a third of the book, this lady's hat, so yeah. But it's really pretty with the red cover and the little white flowers, so then another early 1900s book, 
was, and this one all I could really say is that it was described around the turn of the century, but I thought it was really pretty in a classic kind of way, so here it is. And this is just, I wasn't able to find the publisher, but we can just stare in awe and admiration at the green cover and gold edges. Old fashioned swoon. Okay, these next ones are really cool. So now we're moving into the 1940s and I'm going to show you the vintage 1943 Fritz Eichenberg set is what it's called. These were published with, um, it was Jane Eyre and Wuthering Heights together, but I'm just going to show you the Jane Eyre cover. So here you go. And it's clearly a bunch of the girls from Lowood Academy walking in a somber march. <laughs> Very Jane Eyre mood. I love this because it's Mr. Rochester when he's um, dressed up as that creepy gypsy. Oh my gosh, so cute. <laughs> okay, this next one is hands down one of my favorites I'm going to show you. So now let's move on into 1957. I'm going to show you a French edition of Jane Eyre that in my opinion truly kind of sums up the vibe I relate to the stories having. So if you're ready, here. It is. And I think it's just so gorgeous in the soft pink color with the little um, silhouette of her face going on. This is truly a swoon-worthy cover. And then we're going to catapult forward into 1968 to a Classics Illustrated comic book edition of Jane Eyre that has a little bit of like a retro vibe to me. Kind of not vintage antique anymore, just like retro. So let's take a look. And in this one, you can't really see much of like the comic book style. I wasn't able to find any pictures of the inside, but I like how Jane Eyre was starting to be played around in multiple different media representations. We also have, of course, the Jane Eyre movies starting to come out now. So Jane is living outside of the pages. Then we move on to the 1980s Signet Classics. If you are an American public schooler, you know these very well. You may have read Jane Eyre yourself in this format. Um, here is the 1980s Signet Classic for Jane Eyre. Honestly, this one makes me uncomfortable. I don't really know why her face is so pinched looking. I know she's not supposed to be like traditionally attractive, but I don't think that she's supposed to look so much like a thumbtack. I don't know, kind of Picasso-esque. Yeah, not a fan of this one. <laughs> and then we're crossing over into a new age. We're getting into the 2000s with Jane Eyre. And this is the edition that I first read Jane Eyre with. So it's very, very dear to my heart. Oh, my finger just cracked. But that is the 2003 Barnes & Noble mass market paperback edition of Jane Eyre. Um, this one is not like visually appealing. Clearly you can see that, but it means so much to me because it's the first way that I ever read this story. Uh, the first way that it really came to my bookish heart and really changed things for me in the world of books. So yeah, just take a moment and appreciate. <sighs> Moving onward, in 2005, we got the larger Barnes & Noble paper pack edition of Jane Eyre, which is as seen here. It's not really as fancy. It's kind of plain Jane. <laughs> plain Jane. Is that where that expression came from? She kind of has um, RBF in this photo, but you know, whatever. Okay. There's probably going to be some heat about this next one because I know that people are divided on these editions of books, but now we are going to be looking at the 2011 Barnes and Noble, Barnes and Noble hardcover edition of Jane Eyre. So, honestly, I really like this edition. I think that it captures the tone, the dark and somberish tone of the story. What I don't like is the quote on the back. I think that they chose one that doesn't embody Jane Eyre. I mean, we all know that the quote that we really relate to Jane Eyre is, I am no bird and no net ensnares me. I am an independent being with a free will, which I now exert to leave you or something like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, this one's okay. I like it. Here's like a more a modern simplified cover of Jane Eyre. This one came out in 2011 as well. Let's take a look. 
Nice clean lines, nice pretty blue flowers. It's fine, it's average. Then we're gonna go on to 2016, the Penguin Vintage Classics Bronte series. And this is by far one of my most favorite modern editions of this book. In fact, I really need to get my hands on this edition. Check it out. Ugh, this one truly does capture like the Jane Eyre vibe and aesthetic with the white flowers and the kind of like edgy tree. And I just love the font and the little title emblem. <laughs> Makes me swoon. All right, and so that leads us to the very last one. This is an edition of Jane Eyre that will not come out until June 9th of 2020. So let me show it to you, give you a little sneaky peek. This is the Thomas Nelson season, season edition book, kind of the summer edition of Jane Eyre. And the white that you see around the front of it is actually a dust jacket that has been laser engraved. So underneath it will just be like a plain purple regular hardback with the white being the dust jacket, which I think is super neat. And then here's kind of a picture of the back and there's another weird Jane Eyre quote that doesn't embody the story on the back as well. I really need to have a talk with these publishers about the quotes that they pick for the back of their books, but it's fine. All right, so there you have it. I hope that you enjoyed this first video in the Cover Changes Through the Ages series. I hope that you saw some swoon-worthy Jane Eyre editions that just made your Jane Eyre loving heart die on the inside, because I definitely did. <laughs> If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button in the comments below. Let me know which one of these editions was your very favorite, or if there's one that I missed that you also like, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Oh, that hurt my neck. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for stopping by. Bye.